Hi, this is Gordon Parker from Michigan Tech University, and in this video we're going to look at solving first order differential equations using integrating factors. So here is the system we're going to work with, x dot plus p of t, some function, times x of t equals uh, input function u of t. And we'll assume that the initial condition x t0 is known. And of course what we want to do is solve this, that is find some uh, function x of t. Now what if an m of t existed such that if we just look at this left hand side of the equation and we multiply that left hand side of the differential equation by this function m of t Like so, what if that was equal to ddt m of t times x of t? Now, if that happened, why would that be such a great thing? Well, now what we'll do is we'll take this entire differential equation and multiply it by this function m of t. What that means is, is that the left-hand side is now just this. So we have d dt m of t x of t is equal to, I have to multiply both sides, so that's equal to m of t times u of t. Okay, now that's a good thing, I guess. Why is this such a good thing? Well, we can solve the differential equation, that is find x of t, simply by integrating both sides of this differential equation. So let me just write that out. Now I'll have d d tau of m tau x tau d tau, and I'm going to integrate from t0 to t and I'm going to integrate both sides. And for this term, I can apply the fundamental theorem of calculus and just write it down as mt xt minus mt0. I'm just evaluating the this, oops, this at these two limits, t0 and t, because the differentiation undoes that integration. So mt x t minus mt0 x t0 is equal to the same old integral. Can't do much with that. But presumably we know u of t, or in this case u of tau, so we just have to take u of tau, multiply it by this integrating factor, which is m of t, and then perform this integration. So I can have some uh, nice closed form expression over there on the right hand side. Now all I have to do is solve this equation for x of t, and I actually have the solution. So x of t is equal to mt0 xt0 divided by the integrating factor mt plus, I have to divide that crazy integral by the integrating factor t0 to t m tau u tau d tau and that is it. That's the solution to the differential equation. So now let's do an example Let's do this one. Our example is going to be x dot of t plus 4t times xt. So this 4t is our p of t in the previous work that we did, is equal to t. And again, x t0, our initial condition, is known. Now let's say that magically, so I'll write that down, magically, dot dot dot, that integrating factor is equal to alpha 
e to the 2t squared. We'll see how to get that later, but let's just say that we somehow knew that that was true. The other thing we need is mt0, and that's just equal to alpha e 2t0 squared. The right-hand side, rhs, of this differential equation, or actually the right-hand side of the solution that we looked at on the previous slide, was t0 to t, the integral, m tau, u tau, d tau. So if we plug all the stuff in that we have here, then what we get is alpha times the integral from t0 to t, tau, which comes from here, times our integrating factor, e to the 2 tau squared, d tau. And we can fiddle around with that integral, and we'd get alpha over 4. That's an alpha, by the way. Um, e to the 2 tau squared. And we'd have to evaluate that from t0 to t. And that is equal to alpha over 4 e to t squared minus e to t0 squared. Boom. So now I have that right-hand side, and that's probably the hardest part about this. Well, maybe getting the integrating factor is a little bit tricky, as we'll see in a minute, but if you can get a closed-form uh, solution to this integral, you're doing pretty good. So here we go. This is the right-hand side of that solution that we had on the previous page, and now we can just write out the answer. x of t is equal to alpha e to t0 squared times x t0 divided by alpha e to t squared. Now that was the piece we had on the previous slide, which was the integrating factor evaluated at t0. That's this piece. Multiplied by the initial condition, that's that piece, divided by the integrating factor evaluated at t. Boom, so there's one part of it. And then we have plus, now we had one over alpha e 2t squared, that was one over the integrating factor. And then we have uh, that multiplied by alpha over four, basically this solution that we just calculated, e to the 2t squared minus e to the 2t0 squared. We can simplify this a little bit, and we would get the solution uh, e to the negative 2 t squared minus t0 squared multiplied by that initial condition. So there's the initial condition response uh, plus 1 fourth times the quantity 1 minus e to the negative 2 t squared minus t0 squared. And we've got it. There's the solution to that first order time varying differential equation. Now, we cheated in this case because we just said, oh, magically we have the integrating factor. So now let's look at how to calculate the integrating factor. Well, first, let's do some calculus review. Let's look at ddt of the natural log of t. Well, we know that's equal to 1 over t. So let's jazz this up a little bit and look at ddt, the natural log of some other function, and conveniently, we'll look at the integrating factor, m of t. It's just a notation thing at this point. So we get 1 over mt times ddt, just doing a little chain rule here, m of t. And so what that is, is m dot t, over mt. Good. Just a little bit of calculus review, and we'll set that aside and use it in just a minute. Now what I'm going to do is go all the way back to the original differential equation that we've been playing with. From now on I'm going to dispense with all of the uh, function of time notation just so that we have a little bit more compact presentation here. And let's go all the way back to the first page where the differential equation we were working with on the left hand side looked like this x dot plus px and then we multiplied it by an integrating factor m and we found that we could write that well actually we've sort of posed the question what if we could write it as this I'm just going to expand this out 
mx dot plus mpx. I have to do a little chain rule here, m dot x plus mx dot. Uh, these mx dots cancel out, and I can actually just solve for p, which is equal to m dot over m. And that, we know, is equal to ddt natural log of m from our work right up here. Now what we're going to do is integrate both sides of this equation. So this is p tau d tau. I guess I lied a little bit. So here I'm introducing the um, time dependency again. Just to be clear what we're doing with the integration. Natural log of m tau d tau, and when I integrate this, this piece, what I'm going to get is the natural log of m plus some constant of integration. Actually, I'll use minus, and you'll see why in just a minute. Now what I'm going to do is solve for m. All right, because that's what we want is our integrating factor. So um, what I can do is, is bring this c over to this left hand side and then invert this natural log on both sides. That is m of t is equal to e to the c times e, the integral, this piece over here, p tau d tau. Now, c can be any value I'd like, so it'd be nice to choose c equals zero because then this term just becomes one. But for now, what I'll do is, is I'll just define this alpha as equal to e to the c. So I'll just replace that with an alpha as some constant. And when we do that, then we have our integrating factor is equal to alpha e to the integral of p tau d tau. There is how we calculate the integrating factor. Now, let's return to our example and actually calculate that integrating factor instead of just writing it down by magic. So we had x dot t plus 4t, that's our p of t, times xt equals t. And as I say, pt equals 4t. So that means from the previous slide that the integrating factor m of t is equal to alpha e to the integral 4 tau d tau. And that is just equal to alpha e 2 t squared. That's how we get the integrating factor. Now, if you want to think of it from a procedural standpoint, you can say, well, after you identify the p of t, of course, you could say that the first step is to calculate the integrating factor. Calculate the integrating factor mt is equal to alpha. And of course, we could just let alpha equal 1. Uh, e to the t, or I'm sorry, e to the integral of p tau d tau, we're integrating over t. The next thing that we're going to do is uh, calculate that that right hand side that sometimes is kind of tricky, but we'll integrate from t0 to t of m tau u tau d tau. And once you have that, you just have to write down the answer. And more specifically, x of t is equal to our integrating factor evaluated at t0 times the initial condition divided by the integrating factor plus 1 over that integrating factor again. And then we have this right-hand side stuff that was calculated in step 2. That's it.
So the focus here was solving first order differential equations, perhaps time varying differential equations, using integrating factors. It's a pretty straightforward process. There's a couple tricky spots. You have to be able to calculate this integral and you have to be able to calculate that integral. Other than that, it's pretty straightforward. You can just write down the answer. So again, this is Gordon Parker from Michigan Tech University and thanks for watching.